Elasticsearch versus AWS, it's a battle between the billion dollar David and the trillion dollar Goliath, and the outcome could have a huge influence on the future of open source software as we know it. In today's video, we'll talk about the drama surrounding Amazon and Elastic, but more importantly, you'll learn how open source software actually works from a legal perspective, and why if you're a business that uses open source software, the license granted to you by the creator does actually matter. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and let me know what you think about all this drama in the comments. As of last week, Elasticsearch will no longer be free open source software. Going forward, it'll have a dual license, one of which is proprietary, and the other is SSPL, which is commonly known as a FOPEN source license. This change is a big deal because Elastic used to be licensed under Apache 2.0, which allows commercial use with very few restrictions. The server-side public license, or SSPL on the other hand, has restrictions on what you can do with the software commercially. Now, the vast majority of current Elastic users can still use the software without any negative impact. However, if you're someone like AWS that offers a fully managed Elasticsearch service, you can no longer use future releases of the software to provide that service. For example, if I wanted to launch a startup called Jeff's Elasticsearch service, I wouldn't be able to legally do that without permission from the company. So basically, the license is a way to limit the dominance of big cloud providers. But in the process, it also screws over another group of people, anybody who's contributed to the Elasticsearch codebase over the last 10 years. When you write code for an open source project, you do it under a specific license, and most often you're doing it unpaid in your free time with the expectation that that software will remain free and open source throughout its lifetime. When a company goes to a more restrictive license, it's like pulling the rug out from under you. Gotcha, bitch! There's nothing illegal about it, but it's like saying, hey, thanks for your contribution. Your code is now proprietary, we're gonna make a ton of money off it, pay you absolutely nothing, and not let you build a business from our software going forward. That's a pretty lame deal if you ask me, and Elastic knows this. Which begs the question, why would they make such an unfair change in the first place? Like most things in life, it comes down to the money. Amazon is profitable and makes tons of money in the cloud, with a $1.6 trillion market cap. Meanwhile, Elastic has a meager $15 billion market cap and is nowhere near profitability. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up! Don't bully me! Elastic has argued that AWS has been doing things that are, quote, not okay since 2015. Some of the alleged unethical behavior includes using Elastic's trademarks without authorization, copying features offered in Elastic's cloud product, and copying proprietary code to use in Amazon's open distro for Elasticsearch. And in a broader sense, just using and profiting from the open source software without giving back enough to the community. And Elastic is not the first high profile tech company to have issues with AWS. MongoDB is actually the original pioneer of the SSPL license. They had similar complaints and wanted to restrict the power of cloud companies to offer their software as a service. It's no secret that big tech companies steal, or get inspired I should say, by the features offered by other companies. All of Instagram's features are stolen from Snapchat, and the same dynamic works in the cloud, mostly between the big three companies trying to match each other in feature parity. And Elastic is just one small part of a much bigger system. At the end of the day though, it ends up being a lose-lose situation for Elastic. Had they remained open source, developers would still love them, but AWS would continue to drink their milkshake. But by making the licensing change, they pissed off a bunch of open source developers, and on top of that, Amazon called their bluff. You don't become the king by being a nice guy. Instead of saying, okay Elastic, we'll shut down our service or pay you for a license, Amazon said, fork you bro. We're just going to fork your project and maintain it as an open source project going forward, where we call all the shots. Which means going forward, there are basically two versions of Elasticsearch out in the world. There's the original official one with a restricted license, and the new Amazon fork with the original Apache 2.0 license. The move to fork the project was expected. Because when MongoDB changed their license a couple of years ago, Amazon quickly created their own service called DocumentDB, which is technically a different database but fully compatible with MongoDB. Amazon is big and powerful enough to just whip up a service like this on the fly to circumvent any damage from a licensing change. So it really makes me wonder what Elastic really has to gain from this move. Maybe I'm missing something and let me know in the comments, but it seems like the only thing that Elastic has actually gained from this move is negative press. I put a poll out on Twitter and two out of three people would prefer to use the AWS fork over the original proprietary software. In any case, let's take a step back for a minute to understand what open source software really is and how it affects you as a developer or entrepreneur. 
The authority on open source is the Open Source Initiative, which has been around since the late 90s and is governed by a board of directors. It's not government controlled or anything like that, it's just the accepted organization by the greater tech industry. Now in order for a software to be considered open source, it needs to follow the 10 principles shown here. We're not going to go through all of them, but in a nutshell, the software needs to be free to use and distribute for any purpose, including commercial uses. Now if you want to offer open source software to the world, you'll attach a license to your project and there are a bunch of different licenses out there. Some of the most popular include Apache, MIT, and GPL. My personal favorite is the MIT license, which is very short and basically just says, do whatever the hell you want. Then the Apache license, which is also very popular and what Elasticsearch formerly used, is also very permissive, but basically says, do whatever you want, just don't sue me. And then you might have slightly more restrictive options like GPL, which say that if you make a derivative work, then you also need to share it under an open source license. And sometimes big companies don't like that because they want to take open source software and make it proprietary. Now, when working with an open source project, you'll most often do that on GitHub. For any given project, you should see the license in the root of the repository. And GitHub should give you a nice little breakdown of the actual bullet points in the legal jargon itself. If you're building a business with open source software, it's worth understanding what the license actually means, because that could come back to bite you in a big way down the road. Now, another thing worth pointing out is that when you contribute to open source software, you may also be required to sign a contributor license agreement. This is like the reverse of the project license. It's an agreement made by you, the contributor, allowing the company that owns the repo to do certain things with your code. They're usually only required by big companies that have big legal teams that can manage them. At the end of the day, open source is awesome because it creates an ecosystem where developers and companies can innovate much faster. But you may be wondering, how does anyone make money off of open source software? If you build something awesome, making it open source might seem counterproductive if your goal is to make money. Surprisingly, there are a variety of highly successful business models built on open source. One example is Ruby on Rails. It's an application framework that was used to build many high profile companies like Twitter and Shopify, but it was created by a lesser known company called Basecamp. The popularity of Rails indirectly helped Basecamp grow because it brought them a ton of positive attention and created a huge community of open source developers helping make the framework better. In other words, it turned out to be a great organic marketing tool for building a bigger brand. But there are more direct ways to make money with open source, one of which is in the form of consulting. My friends over at Narwhal created the NX framework for managing large enterprise web applications. It's open source, but if you're a large enterprise that wants to use this framework, who better than to consult you on it than the company that created it? Although the software is free, the consulting fees are not. Red Hat also follows a similar model with billions of dollars in revenue. But another way to make money is to offer your software as a hosted service in the cloud, often with extra features that you can't get from the main open source software. This is the approach that Elastic is taking, where they offer additional features like security aimed at enterprise clients, because that's where the money is. And another example is WordPress, the most popular blog builder in the world. Even though it's open sourced, the company also offers their own hosted service that makes it much easier to set up, configure, and host a WordPress blog. And who would you rather pay for that service than the company who created the original software? So to recap, there are three basic ways to make money from open source in my opinion. Use it as a marketing tool, use it to gain consulting clients, or use it to build your own paid service. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there, but before you go, make sure to let me know what you think about all this stuff in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.